Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we'll be reviewing the uh, Tamara Natural Processed Ethiopia from Tim Wendelbow. And there's a bag right there. And Tim Wendelbow, based out of Oslo, Norway. And they're a coffee roaster that has appeared on this channel multiple times before. However, this is our first time reviewing one of their natural processed coffees. And that's definitely what caught my interest about this one as Tim Wendelbow doesn't usually offer too many naturals. Couple that with the fact that I've actually really liked the previous experiences we've had with Tim Wendelbow and that this sounds like my flavor profile sort of coffee. I was very curious to see how this one might turn out. This right here is day 41. And recipe we went with for this coffee was our standard recipe, a 16 to 1 water to coffee ratio brewed at 205 degrees Fahrenheit. And I like this best through the V60, which indicates a more medium fine grind. Tim Wendelbow's recipe does have a more concentrated coffee ratio, so we'll discuss that a little throughout this video. Roast profile for this coffee, this is definitely a true Nordic light. Tim Wendelbow definitely roasts on the lighter side of things, so definitely we'll say, even for a natural, this one's a very light coffee. With all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. Day 26, first impression. And what I noticed right off the bat was it did have a little bit of the fermenting quality. After I purchased this coffee, I looked at the information on Tim Wendelbow's website and I saw that they picked this one out because it was supposed to be a little bit more clean. And it was. Despite the fact that it had a slight bit of fermentiness, it was still on the cleaner side of natural processed coffees, especially relative to a lot of other ones that we've had this year. Berry fruits, the most clearly defined aspect to this coffee, quite vibrant, quite pronounced. So. Given that it was a slightly more clean berry, left a pretty positive first impression. Day 28, ran it through the V60 and was actually super impressed by this cup as it was a very clean and sweet berry component to it. Reminded me a little bit of a strawberry lollipop and it actually reminded me a lot of the Red Plum from Nomad, which is probably my favorite Nomad coffee I've ever had. Because that one came out so clean, vibrant, and kind of this strawberry, unique strawberry forward cup. There were some tropical components to it as well, a slight bit of citrus, a slight bit of stone fruit, nothing too specific or defined at this time. But given that the coffee had a very lively strawberry aspect to it, I really enjoyed the coffee on this day. Day 30, ran it through the April dripper, and so we've mentioned that's something we've been kind of experimenting with, and it's still on the cleaner side of this strawberry lollipop aspect. It was a good cup. There was a slight caramelized sweetness with this robust herbality. I think I was able to get a little bit more of the herbality, especially in the earlier days through this brew method. So it was another great cup, really enjoyed it through those brew methods. Wish I had more April drippers, because I would probably continue experimenting with it. Not drippers, filters, but I'd probably continue experimenting with it a little bit more. Day 31, brewed with Tim's recipe, and there wasn't too much of a change except for the fact that it had this slightly grainy quality. So if I have this correct, I believe Tim Wendelbow's recipe is about a 15.38 to one water to coffee ratio, so a little bit more concentrated, a little bit more herbality, and maybe that's why it's more concentrated. Tim really likes his herbal aspects in his coffees. But a lot of the berry vibrant components were much more strong, but it also came with a little bit more of the fermentiness to it. Slightly citric tropical, still a really good cup, but I think it was just pulling out some of the factors I liked a little less from this coffee. Day 32, back through the Chemex, and it definitely skews in the direction of the vibrant fruit components yet again, maintaining a high level of clarity, but it's just not quite as clean in the V60, and I think the V6 correction through the Chemex, I think the Chemex was pulling out a little bit more of those fermenty aspects to it. Picked out some additional notes, pineapple, mango, papaya, all complementing the strawberry aspects. There are abundance of tropical fruits in it. So still a great cup, just leaning a little bit more towards the V60 because on day 34, back through the V60 with our standard recipe, we had the best day we'd had to that point. As the clarity is great, it's vibrant, and it's so fresh fruit forward. So it reminded me so much of actually fresh strawberries and even fresh peaches because I was able to pick out this interesting ripe peachiness to the cup in addition to a ripe pineapple. The fruit components on this day were so wonderful, so clean and so sweet that it was one of the best days of coffee I've had from a natural in quite a while actually, impressive cup. Day 36, continuing with the same recipe and I've kind of reached a level of consistency. So when I really focused on this very basic standard recipe that I had, I was really able to get some nice aspects from it as the ripe tropical fruits are present yet again, very much dominating the cup. There are additional aspects on the back end. There's a very slight herbality. I think that they have a floral component list on here. I could definitely see hibiscus. Not surprising, Tim Wendelbow, as mentioned, really loves the herbality, so that's there. But another great day on day 36, 34 and 36, wonderful days. And then day 38, I just kind of wanted to experiment with the coffee since those days were so nice and I'd actually gotten great consistency. I wanted to see if this was maybe an airproof coffee, but 
not necessarily the case as I raise the temperatures just to see if maybe pushing the extraction might get a little bit more out of the coffee, but it just meant a little bit more fermenty of a cup, a little less clean, a little bit more of the brightness in place of the clean berry. So it was a still nice cup of coffee, but not quite as pleasant as it had been before. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting well so you can see what we're getting. And a lot of level fours, so let's go through those real quick. I'm actually gonna start with the finish, level four. I think the finish is great because oftentimes with these very strong coffees, they can have an overly lasting finish. I'm very happy with it being at that level four because this isn't one that lasts eternal. This is a really nice finish to this coffee. Sweetness, level four. That's a good thing. It's actually on the higher side of the level four. It's a very sweet cup of coffee, very fruit sweet cup of coffee too. So that's great for this one. Acidity at level four, not surprising in any aspect, but given that it's mostly there just at that level four mark and the sweetness is a little higher than that, works for me, it works quite well. I actually really like the acidity in this coffee too. Berry fruit, level four. All these fruit factors are actually on the higher side. So that's a higher side of level four. I didn't know if I could justify the level five because I didn't want to insinu insinuate that this is an overly dominant berry aspect to this coffee because it is there, but it's much more clean and it's much more fresh fruit as opposed to a heavy kind of boozy berry component. That's what I really wanted to hammer home with this. But in addition to that, the citrus fruit also on the higher side of the level three, you could honestly justify the berry at a level five, the citrus at a level four, and the stone fruit at a level four, because there's enough of those aspects to really push those at the higher mark. Stone fruit level three, again, higher side of the level three, able to pick out some interesting like mango. And there were times I could say it's a peachy aspect. Oftentimes when I actually get really clean strawberry, it can also remind me of peachiness. So I could see both of those things in this coffee. Definitely feel like those are justified at that mark. Savoriness level three, yes, there's a little bit of the herbality to it, and that's why the florality is at a level three. I think that they have a floral note listed on here, and I would just immediately think of biscuits. It's a very red floral coffee, but that being said, the entire coffee is pretty red in general, given the berry sweetness to it. However, there are enough aspects to kind of balance that out in general. Body level two, yeah, it is slightly thinner, which I don't know if that's necessarily common for too many of Tim Lindebo's coffees. Typically, I experience much more of the body in the coffee. I think now that I think about this, yeah, it definitely should be bumped up one. I'm gonna bump that up to a level three. So it's on the two here, but that's the one adjustment I would probably make to this tasting wheel. Um, bitterness attributed to the citric components to it. Uh, I mentioned there were times, especially through the April dripper, you could push up the caramel because it had a like, caramelized taste to it, slight bit of smokiness. I think with the exception of the body at the level two, pushing that up one, I actually quite like the way that this tasting way looks. However, a lot of these things are on the verge of going a little higher. But before we finish discussing the tasting wheel, I wanted to save this for the end because this is by far the most important thing of this coffee. Now cleanliness is level four. That is an actual level four. So for it being a natural processed coffee, I don't know if I've had many natural processed coffees reach a level four mark this year. Very, very clean cup of coffee, especially when you get it right. And that was a massive selling point to me, by far the best aspect of this coffee because it shows that the endangered species of clean naturals can still exist. And anytime they do, they score very high for me. So really liked that part of this coffee, by far the most important aspect to this coffee. All right, so my overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee, I really, really liked it. And I don't know if you wanna qualify the musto processed Ethiopia we had from Kawa earlier this year, but if we're talking non-wash processed Ethiopians this year, this one or that Kawa coffee is my favorite of the year because I really loved the fruit vibrancy I was able to get from it. This is what I look for in naturals, and this is why I'm so, I don't know, hard on other natural processed coffees is because I think it's possible to still get all the wonderful vibrancy that people really love from these natural processed coffees without the heaviness, without the fermentiness, without the booziness, without the funkiness. And this one is a great example of that. So I always rave about the coffees when they do come out in a clean, vibrant sense. So this one right here, a real winner for me. At the very least, it's going to earn an honorable mention spot because I really enjoyed this coffee. The type of person I would suggest this coffee to Anybody that loves that endangered species of clean, natural processed coffees, because this one has a wonderful, clean strawberry vibrancy. I've shared this coffee with some people that have been a little bit hesitant towards natural processed coffees, and they loved this one too. They were really impressed by it as well. So it does go to show that people aren't necessarily opposed to naturals. They're just more opposed to the heaviness that comes from them because they can be really well done and they can be real winners. 
For the most part, I think I'll leave this review at that. If you by chance had an opportunity to try this coffee, we'd love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. But this right here has been a review of the Tatmara Natural Processed Ethiopia from Tim Wendelbow. Thank you for watching.